How are you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today is part two of our tool post build for our big lathe. So if you missed part one where we made the tool post, there'll be a link in the description below. We ended up doing a bit of a fun challenge to guess what the weight of the tool post was. There were a few of you that got it smack on the money and a lot of you are way off. It started out as 41.5 kilo, and after all the machining was completed, the finished weight was 26.4 kilograms. So I have sent the tool post out to be nitrided. We're hopefully gonna get that back in the next one to two days. But while that's out getting done, we need to make the rest of the parts in order to fit it onto the machine. So there are four parts that we need to make. There's gonna be the new dowel in order to lock the tool post in position because the original one is very ugly and I don't want any part of the old tool post to be a part of the new one. We still need to make up a boss that is going to hold the thrust bearing and we also need to make up a new handle. So that's gonna include a threaded boss which holds the tool post down and then the handle will thread into that boss. So when we get our tool post back from nitriding it is going to be black. I didn't want to send the rest of the hardware out to be nitrided because that's just going to be a lot of black happening on the tool post. If you look at other tool posts on other machines they generally don't stay one color. They're either black and silver or black and whatever color the machine is. So rather than have it all the same color I'm going to make the rest of the parts out of stainless steel so it will be black and silver. It's not going to rust. It is going to look quite nice and it's also still going to be strong. The stainless steel we're going to be using it is just scrap that I have had floating around. We have a piece of 60 mil solid bar which will be used to make the boss that holds the thrust bearing and we'll also be using the 60 mil to make the nut that clamps down on top of the tool post and the handle screws into and the handle is going to be made from 30 mil round bar and then the dowel pin will be made from a piece of one inch round bar so the first thing we're going to be making is the boss that holds the thrust bearing and sits on top of the tool post so what I'm going to do, I'm going to face off the end of the bar. I'm going to skim cut the OD just to clean it up. I then need to drill a hole down the center of the part. I'm then going to bore that out so it fits over the shaft on the tool post. Then I'm going to counter bore it to fit our thrust bearing and then I can part it off. So I've never actually drilled stainless steel with my cruz drills before, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I'm not a big fan of stainless steel. That's why I don't like stainless. It's very gummy. So now that we've got that bored out, we're gonna do the counter bore for the thrust bearing. So what the thrust bearing does, it allows you to put a lot more pressure down on top of a surface because there is not much friction fighting you in order to tighten things up. So a lot of tool posts on the market use the exact same setup. So I'm gonna do it on this one as well. And the bearing we're gonna be using, it is an FBJ. So it is a Japanese bearing. 
very good quality. The thrust bearing is made up of three main parts. You have a top plate and a bottom plate. They have grooves that have been machined into them. And then the center plate, it is actually the cage that holds all of the ball bearings. This little bearing, when you've got a rotating shaft, it can take two and a half tonne. But on a tool post, in the configuration we're gonna set it up in, you could put five tonne of pressure on this and it would handle it no dramas at all. So the diameter of the bearing is 47.4 mil. They do not need to be an interference fit, so we are gonna bore it to 47.6. As long as there is load against it, it will self-center itself it doesn't have to be pressed in there. Good enough. So that's 95% of the first part done. I'm not gonna try and deburr this because I'm probably gonna end up hurting myself. So we're gonna get on to making the next part. Once we get everything made, I can then go back and chamfer all these edges much safer holding it in the machine. So the part we're making now, it is actually the nut that will be clamping down on top of the thrust bearing boss we've just made. So what I need to do, I need to face it. I'm then gonna turn it down to the correct diameter. I then need to drill a 21 mil hole in the end of it. We're not gonna drill that all the way through the part because I do want it to be a blind hole. We're gonna tap that with an M24 thread to match up with the shaft on the compound. And then I will part it off, turn it around, and then we will put a long chamfer on it to give it a bit of style for the top of the tool post.
So now it's time to tap this hole. I'm going to be using an M24 blue band tap, so it is probably the best tap to use on stainless steel. But stainless is one of those unforgiving materials. I don't do enough of it anymore in order to carry all the correct tooling. This can either go really well or really badly. So that went pretty well. I've had a few bad experiences with tapping stainless steel. Really happy with the result there. Let's carry on with the rest of the turning. So that's the lathe work for the nut completed. While I've still got the machine set up this way, I'm just gonna deburr the boss that we've made for our thrust bearing. So that is our first part completed. So before I can finish making the nut, I do need to make the handle. So the handle will be threaded into the top of the nut and it will be used to apply leverage and force down on top of the tool post. So let's get on to that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So to make the handle, I'm not going to be following any drawings. I'm sort of just going to be making it up as I go along. But there are a few things I need to keep in mind. I need it to look right. It does need to be in proportion for the rest of the parts that I have machined. I don't want it to be too big or too long or too bulky. And it needs to be functional. And we're just going to make it with what tooling we have.
Right, guys, so that is our handle finished. What I need to do now is I need to drill and tap the side of the nut where the handle is going to go. But I can't just drill that anywhere. I do need to make sure I put that handle in the right spot. Otherwise, the handle might finish up on the wrong side of the tool post or it could end up in the way when you're trying to operate the machine. So what I did before the tool post left, I took the height on what the tool post is, take the boss into account plus the thrust bearing, and then I know where my nut is going to finish. Then I can mark out where the hole is gonna go for the handle in the nut. So that's our nut and our handle completed. Last thing I need to do is make up the dowel pin. So let's get on to that. So making the dowel pin, it's very basic. I'm gonna take my one inch piece of solid bar. I'm gonna turn it down to 14 mil. That will then pass through the tool post we've just made. I'll then turn it around, clean up all the faces. I'm gonna do a very shallow knurl on the end, cut two 45 degree chamfers on that, give it a quick emery and it'll be done.
Righto guys, so that is those four parts completed. Now all we need to do is wait for the tool post to come back from nitriding and then we can get everything fitted onto the lathe. So our tool post is back from nitriding. I'm really happy with how that looks. It looks amazing. But before I can fit this onto the lathe, I do need to give the top of the compound a clean and I need to stone the surfaces to make sure everything's nice and flat. So now that that's all done, let's get this thing assembled. So I'm not going to be reducing the diameter of the bottom of the bolts to avoid them deforming when they've been tightened up. I haven't had an issue with that ever on any of my machines, so I don't feel the need to go that extra step and turn these down. Righto, so that's our tool post completed and fully assembled. We've got a couple of our tools clamped in there. It looks amazing, it looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Everything just looks right, it's in proportion, it functions correctly. So indexing the tool post around using the pin in the little pockets, it is just spot on. Everything's really nice and solid. The handle finishes in a really good spot too. You get enough pressure down on the tool post that it doesn't want to move. Everything just feels rigid. It's probably the first time I've actually been excited to run this machine. It's a big step up from that other thing I took off it. So now that the tool post is ready, I'm going to set up a piece of tube so we can put our big boring bar in and open up the ID. So 
So the piece of tube we're going to be machining, it is a 900 mil length of 10 and 3 quarter OD by 9 inch ID. So I do need to bore out the ID and I need to turn down the OD. And the reason for that, in some cases, we're not able to get the right size material for the cylinders that we build. You can either buy material and bore it out or you buy material and turn it down. In this case, I have to do both. So I'm gonna bore the ID first. So I'm just gonna throw a dial indicator on there just to get things running to within half a mil. Whoa. <laughs> it's very high over here.
Righto, so I've got that barrel bored halfway and to within half a mil of its finished size. Something like this we would generally outsource or we would have to tell our customer the material is not available. So now with our new tool post we can do everything in house but I think I'm going to need a bigger boring bar. So I hope you enjoyed the build of our shop made tool post. Thanks for watching. With the threaded, so we need to make up. The, so the other two parts. Oh my god! You get higher. Right. Wait. So how much done that? The last two parts. I am going to take that nasty burr off the. I'm just going to de. Hmm. That didn't look good. I mean, I understand what I'm saying. Now with our new tool. Oh wait. Fuck. How'd you go from there? What was the next bit? How'd you start that? Am I saying righto guys? Or so? Or and? So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to face off the job just to clean up the face. <laughs> they have a groove machined in them that holds the row of balls in them. And the bearing we're going to be using, it is a Japan... Oh, I didn't even look at that. FBJ. Righto, so that's our tool post full of... <laughs> I hate words. So there's a few things I need to keep in mind when making the handle. What the fuck was that? <laughs> 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 Fucking train. <laughs> Fucking train. It chipped that fucking drill. <laughs> Fuck, I hate stainless steel. Well, that finish there is fucking awesome. It functions correctly, spot on. She's Bonza.